All right, uh, welcome back to another video. Apologies for not having a video um, pretty much this entire week. Did a couple of shorts here and there, but I have not put out a you know full video, uh, and that's because I had some you know issues with this current um, install that I have. So if you can't notice by what you're looking at here, I have installed NixOS. Um, I was just interested in you know trying it out. You know I've tried. You know, pretty much every other distro. Um, I still need to try Void as well. I've had a couple of people tell me to try that, but I wanted to give NixOS a try. And just to jump to you know the conclusion, um, I actually really like it. I have been having issues with you know Arch. Obviously, Arch had that attack like on their service and everything, so they had issues with the AUR going down and their website uh, going down. You know, Pac-Man still stayed um, good because those were you know hosted. It was separately on the on their GitHub, so you're able to retrieve, you know, the packages and stuff through Pac-Man. But when it came to like the AUR and things like that, they there was a bunch of issues. And obviously, when installing, you know, different dot files or installing, you know, apps that you need that you know aren't a Pac-Man repository or uh, maybe not have a flat pack available or you don't want to use flat pack, you had to you know resort to the AUR. And just with everything going on with that, I just wanted to try something different and something that might be like a little bit more stable and not have so many issues because i've had some issues with some different packages um in the arch aur so i kind of want to try some some other things so I, I did try you know fedora for a little while um, you know fedora is not a bad distro at all it pretty much did what i needed but there was occasions where like some like packages and or dependency issues um especially in hyperland trying to find something uh for a alternative something like that didn't work so yeah so basically um i went on a little <laughs> little hunt and someone in my uh discord uh had mentioned uh zany os and i can his name up on the screen here but so basically i thought i'd give it a shot and he said uh zany os is a a nix os based install of uh the dot file for hyperland and so this is the Hyperland desktop that you see here, but it's using the um, Zany OS uh, configuration files from their from their NixOS. So uh, this is the first time you know I'm using NixOS. So those of you that you know are kind of experts in it, please excuse anything that I <laughs> might say wrong, or you can correct me you know down in the comments below. I welcome it very much. So, uh, but yeah. So basically, I have been using this for the past I don't know about five days, I'd say. And I've had definitely had my share of issues. I'm not saying this is like <laughs> the easiest thing to just jump into and have everything, you know, working out of the box. I had some issues that aren't quite exactly related to NixOS itself. I just got a new monitor and I enabled like HDR and, and things like that. So I had issues with screen sharing and it, it come to find out it was actually because I had the 10-bit support option enabled in my Hyperland configuration and that was causing it to you know show a black screen whenever I tried to sh um, share anything. And I went through this whole rabbit hole of thinking it was NVIDIA issue or, or thinking it was uh, my configuration issue. I was thinking it was a bunch of different things, but Come to find out, it's actually just how I had my monitors um, set up. So I had the 8-bit uh, support option enabled in my uh, monitor settings here, and that's what was preventing from it actually, you know, working. Uh, so ever since I changed that back, I was good to go, and everything, you know, was good for for the screen sharing aspect of it. Um, I did also have an issue with the um uh, version of the Nix package, uh, where I was it wasn't able to like find my N Nvidia um card, so I was it only had the software option enabled to um do the encoding, and so I, I switched to the Flatpak version, which is the more official version, anyways. Um, so that you know fixed that issue, and I haven't had any issues, you know, with that since. But otherwise, uh, just Zany OS in, in a whole, I think it's a, it's a great distro. I love the aspects and things that it has incorporated. They've incorporated this thing called Styl Stylix Image. So basically you can define what um, image it is. So I, you know, uploaded this image into the same wallpapers folder that they, you know, were using. And then, you know, just had the path go to that image. And so now everything, including my terminal here, I believe like some other apps like the uh, file manager and other apps like that will actually just take the uh, color scheme of whatever, Im whatever image that you have here. So that's a really um, nice aspect there. Um, they have a couple different way bars um, options that you can choose from. So, you know, that's a very uh, nice thing. I ended up going with um, D-Dub's uh, way bar here. 
uh, which is kind of my favorite one out of the out of all of them. It's more minimalist, um, but kind of has like a little flashy aspect to it. Um, you can change your animations down here as well. So I, you know, really like the the, the flexibility and um, the different options that you do have here in the the Zany OS build. And so yeah, those are the, just just like the variables and stuff that you can you know change there. The one thing that I really like about Next, so basically you have your uh, this package um, dot next um, option and like just on a standard next OS build, it's probably just gonna be on a configuration dot next. Uh, and then where it has the environment uh, system package um, variable, this is where all the, the packages will be. And basically you just put the package name in here and then do a rebuild. Uh, and then once you do a rebuild, your package will be installed. So I just like having this, you know, cohesive list of all of the packages that are installed on my system. And it's very easy to go in and change or, you know, remove or add whatever you want. You made a uh, web app option to automatically, you know, open the, um, the packages option, uh, here. Uh, so as you can see, you can actually just type in, there's a, um, 120,000 packages that you can, you know, choose from, and you can just type in what you want and see if it's available, you know, on, um, the next OS. So I actually can just show you what that looks like, um, you know, to install a package. So what you would do is kind of just go to the Nixox package uh, website. So I would say I have that uh, keybind to open up the web app to search for anything here. So like if I want to install local send, well, I can type it in, right? That'd be nice. So as you can see, there's there's the package here. Um, so I could see what the package name is and it's just, you know, local send. Um, and this is what you, you would put into your configuration.nix file. But since I'm using, you know, Flakes and Home Manager, it is set up a little bit differently. Um, but I would just copy this and then um, open up my configuration and go into the uh, packages um, section here. So click on packages and then uh, down here, I can actually just um, add it into this list. So I would add the local send in there and then go ahead and save it. And then all I would need to do is do a rebuild or you can do just rebuild the, the flake instead of the entire um, system. So they have a uh, wrapper for um, uh, rebuilding the flake uh, it's just fr and so it's like flake rebuild and so basically it just takes a second and it'll rebuild and then i'll be able to open that application straight from there so that's how you would install you know different applications i mean it's it's pretty easy it's really not too much different than going into um like searching the aur and finding the package and then you know installing it sometimes it can take a little while to to rebuild um so you yeah, know obviously that took um, a little while there, but like once it goes through, it goes through the animations uh, and the dependency uh, graph here, which I actually like <laughs> the way that looks. Um, so I enjoy uh, watching that happen. And then it just reloads everything. And then once it's done, you're good to go. And then now, so local send will be in my uh, system. So I can go and open that. And there you go, local send. Um, so yeah, it is pretty easy to, to get going and, and get everything working um, and installing packages and all, and, and all that. It's really just, you know, getting your system, you know, set up exactly the way you want it. Um, you could have some some challenges because you have to get familiar with the way NixOS does things and with like Flakes and Home Manager and all that um, different stuff. Took me a little while to, to understand it and, and get used to it, uh, but I did and, and, and it all worked out. So I was able to get everything that I wanted to get set up um, in my system. So like all the packages and stuff that I needed to use some uh, like web apps and stuff for for certain things like as you saw being able to install the uh like the package uh manager option um and have that you know set to a keybind i was able to get that you know set up with my uh with my web apps and so yeah everything seems to be going pretty good i was able to get my uh development environment um set up so i used like the flutter sdk um that took me quite a while <laughs> to be honest with you but i was able to finally get everything uh, running on there. The the biggest thing was like the Android Studio um, version was not being read uh, within the NixOX um, packages. And then the, the connected devices was also not being, you know, the path was not being found correctly. Um, but I finally get all that uh, figured out. I had to do some things within the actual flake.nix here to have uh, the flood, Flutter development environment down here. So there's some certain things that had to be um, enabled to uh, to get that. Um, so as you can see, I got all that, uh, set up and, um, yeah, so that was a challenge, but, <laughs> but I got there.
Uh, and then I also have my Moonlight um, and Sunshine set up for my um, other PC because I use that for my other PC, like when I want to show off some other like dot files or different distros and stuff like that. I have another PC that I use um, a capture card on um, that I'm able to, you know, capture in my OBS on this system and be able to show you like the full installs and stuff. And then also use it for gaming either on, you know, another uh, gaming distro or if I want to remote into the Windows um, drive on there to game, I can do so. And I actually map that to um, a key binding. Uh, so it's actually on another window right now within my uh, system. So as you can see, this is, you know, full blown uh, Windows, but it's on another PC, but it's in my NixOS uh, configuration here. And I can, you know, have that, you know, go full screen and I can just move it on. It's just like another, you know, workspace uh, within my system. So it's really nice to, to be able to do that. And I made the I made the key binding go straight into it without having to like open the actual Moonlight software and then select which, you know, app and stuff I want to uh, launch. It just launched straight, you know, straight into it. And then I have full access to here and be able to play with it, you know, whatever game and um, do whatever I want I want from there, but never leave my actual, you know, system. So it's really nice to be able to kind of just jump around and do that. Um, I've done that obviously on, on, on uh, distros, but I was able to get it working on here as well so pretty much anything that i have tried in the past i've got working on here and for me i just i just feels more stable and the fact that i have the option to kind of like go back i know like you know butterfest and uh, snapshots is an option too on other dish shows but it's just like the the packages themselves just seem like you have some more um options for stability having to have the latest version for every package like on arch um, and then you have the breakages and stuff with like some packages in the aur i just find it to be a little bit more a little more like a, a peace of mind, <laughs> if you will, uh, for, you know, my, my system itself. So I'm going to stick with this for a little while and see how I like it. Uh, I'll probably do some other videos on like some different like configuration stuff with the Nix and some other things like that. Um, if there's anything you guys want to see, um, definitely let me know in the comments below. Uh, but other than that, I will catch you guys in the next one and consider liking and subscribing. Peace.